I praise Him that I have breath in my body. I praise Him that I am able to raise my hands in the sanctuary. I praise Him that I know who to turn to in my time of trouble. Yes. I praise Him because Thank He you. is God, the one and only true God. Amen. I praise Him. Right. I lift Him up today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank if you me. would just Thank lift you. your hands today, if you would just give honor and glory yeah. unto God this morning, just lift up your hands and just praise Him. Just thank Him for all things. Oh, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you today, mighty God. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I lift up your name. Lord, your word says that if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men unto you. Oh, I lift up the name of Jesus today. Truly, you are great and great to be praised. Lord, we ask that you would anoint this word as it goes forth. Lord, that you would touch our hearts and we would receive your word, that we would receive it with gladness. Your word says, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Let us hear this word. Write it upon the tables of our hearts. Let it make a change and a difference within our lives. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, I just praise God. I thank you so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going back up just a, a, a little bit in the scriptures because I just want to give you an, an idea of the kind of person that Elijah was, okay? Because when you read this, you go, wow, this chick scared to death out of him. She just took off running. This, this woman spoke a word and he just hid. But I want you to realize what, who this man was and what he had done, what he had accomplished in God. So if you could just back up just a little bit for me to chapter 18. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I thank God today. I thank Him because I am able to stand here today. I praise Him because you know what? I know who to trust. I know who to turn to. I know who to believe in. I know from whence cometh my help, as the word says. I know who to turn to when I'm in trouble. I know who to turn to when I am down. I know who to turn to when I'm up. I know who controls my life. I just love him. I just praise God today. Hallelujah. Oh, we're going back up to 17. I'm so sorry. You know, Jennifer, there was a period where I was having a lot of problems in my body, my but you know, you heard my moans and groans. Absolutely, and I understand. My shoulder, my neck, and I was having all kinds of problems. <laughs> and I was trying to find the right medicines that would help me. And I went to the doctors, and I've done this and that and the other, and and they couldn't they couldn't help me. And the, the medicines they gave me ended up I ended up in intensive care because I was bleeding internally. Mm -hmm. Everything that I take that was that worked was destroying me inside. And so I finally just decided, you know, I'm hey, I'm almost 68 years I'm 68 years old and. I might as well face it. I've got, I've Going to have a pain or two now. Going to have pain, you know. <laughs> and I said, Lord, you got to help me cope with this somehow, you know. And you know what? It's been a lot better since I don't. I don't understand that. I do not understand why we go through things that we suffer. But the one thing I do know is that God is a healer. He's a deliverer. Yes, he is. He is the one and only That's true God, almighty yes. God, able to do all things. Yes. Wow. And you know, even when you think it's impossible, he steps right in and makes it possible. Yeah. That's just who he is. And there are you times know, I go through periods, you know, where it's, it's kind of bad, and I just tough it out, and I say, Lord, you take care of this, and you know what, person is gone. And, I... and you know what, we have to lean on God in those yeah. times. Yeah. I'm glad that I know who to turn to in my trouble. If my body is ailing, if my finances aren't what they need to be, if my per my personal family life is falling down, I know who to turn yes, to. I, I know to go to God. You know what? You can turn to drugs and you can turn to alcohol and you can turn to sex and you can turn to, to your work. There's a lot of things that you sure. can turn to to try to fill in that void and yeah. try to Make it, but I'm glad that I know who to turn to. Amen. I know that God has the answer for Hallelujah. me, no matter what the question is. I want you to understand, it doesn't matter what the question is, God has the answer Amen. for you. He already has, but we just got to be able to hear Him. Yes. You understand, we have to be able to hear Him. I just want to give you a little story, understanding of who Elijah was, some of, and I know many of you have heard these stories a hundred times, and some of you are hearing the story for the very first time. Sure. And if so, that's great. And I'm not uh, the best reader in the world. Um, 
Sister Carol's not here. She's my reader. <laughs> she really intends to be here, but she just she was so wore out from her. Uh, She's going business. through a lot right now. Yeah. And you know what? The good she thing is. we know is that God absolutely her understands up. her situation. Yeah. He knows her understands. And that's a, a, a lot of what I want to get into here when we get to it. Amen. So go First Kings chapter 17. And I'm probably not going to pr pronounce these words right either, but that's okay because God knows what my intentions are. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself before the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. God literally fed this man. Do you understand? He literally, physically fed him. And it came to pass, yeah. after a while, that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain. Just as, God, just as he had prophesied, there's not going to be any rain. Well, eventually, guess what? Even his water dried up. And he had no choice but to do what God told him to do. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth unto Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering a sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold... I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Listen, I know you're hungry, but I have just enough for me and my son. And once we eat this, we have nothing else. The drought's taken everything. We're just, we're just going to eat this and die because I have no hope. I have nothing. There's nobody to take care of me. This is it. And, he's, and listen to what he said. Now all she's got is enough for her and her son. They're going to eat this. And then they're probably going to oh, die of starvation because they don't have anything else. Now, this is a man of God. This is what he says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make thee for thee and for thy son. He says, First, make me one. Before you get one for you and your son, make me one first. And you're, you're first you're thinking, what a selfish man. Yeah. Hear this. Poor widow woman has just enough milk for her and her son. And then they're going to die. And what's he want? He wants to take half of it. Make me one first. How selfish. But see, he wasn't being selfish. He was doing exactly what God told him. Because if you do what God tells you, you will be exceedingly rewarded for the things that you do. Even when it seems impossible uh -huh. even when there's no logic to it at all come on you want me to make you cake <coughs> I don't even have enough for me and my son but she did just exactly what he said for thus saith the Lord God of Israel the barrel of milk shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he and her house did eat many days. Because she listened to the man of God, yes, because she did this stupid thing, I'm, I'm going to give you half of it, I don't even have enough. Okay, but regardless, it may seem like a really crazy thing to do. I just feel something inside of me that says, I need to do this. Haven't you ever just been unctioned by the Holy Ghost? to yes. do something, yes. even though it didn't make any sense at all. Yes. You're thinking, that's a crazy thing to do. I got $40 and, and God wants me to put it in the offering plate? Mm. Yeah. I've got $40 and God wants me to give it to my neighbor that I really don't even like? They're horrible to me. Why should I do this? Because sometimes 
you do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Amen. It may not be the sensible thing or the logical, logical thing, thing but it's the God thing to do. Amen. And when the God thing comes out, that's what makes it Amen. 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 My wife's got a little saying, and logic is the enemy of faith. Oh, absolutely. If she hadn't depended on that logic, she'd have tossed him out. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt. <laughs> My cake, no, no, no. <laughs> probably chocolate cake, too. <laughs> and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Now listen, she did exactly what the man told her, gave him the food, that, that, and, and, and they, they ate for days and days, and now her son is dying. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee? O thou man of God, art thou coming to me? To call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. Come on, I, I've done what you told me. Don't let my son die. <coughs> and he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft, yeah. where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Even a liar. Listen, he's questioning God. God, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Come on. Oh. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child so come again unto him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. That's the first CPR ever performed. you know that? <laughs> the first spiritual CPR came to pass right there, man. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and thou art the word of the Lord, and my mouth is truth. You understand? She's seen firsthand what God was able to do. Yes. Now, first of all, you would think that the cruise of oil in the mill never... I mean, can you imagine going to your flour canister and, and you dump it out and you go back and it's full again? And you go back to the canister and you dump it out and next time you it's full again. And he dumps out the oil and, and, and she goes back and it's full again. And she dumps out the oil and she goes back and it's full again. And this is a spiritual thing coming to pass. Oh my! Where there's nothing to fill up, God fills up. Amen. Where there's no way to make it, God makes a way. Hallelujah. When it seems totally impossible, God is there. For there is nothing impossible with God. When it looks like everything is falling apart and there's no way this can happen, God comes right there and it's okay. He makes it right. And then you fall down again. You go through this other horrible experience. And you say, oh God, what's happening? And he says, don't give up on me. And a man of God comes on the scene and instantly God performs what needs to be done. So you think that Elijah's real, oh, right now God has filled this up and God has healed this kid. He's brought him back. I mean, God literally, through Elijah, brought this man, this little boy, back to life. Chapter 18. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Do you understand? It had not rained in three years. Because Elijah told Ahab, it is not going to rain. It's not going to rain. And now he's saying, I want you to go talk to him. And Elijah sent to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. See, God hid. God has a way of protecting his people. That's what he was doing. He was putting a hedge of protection around his prophets right then. Because the enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy anyone he possibly can. <clears throat> and Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land and to all fountains of water, and into all brooks, peradventure, that I may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land, and between them to pass through it, Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, 
Art thou my Lord Elijah? See, God made sure that Obadiah met up with Elijah because he had something he wanted done. God, God works on both ends of everything. Do you understand that? If God sends me out to do something, wherever he's sending me, he's already working on yeah. the other end because that's the kind of God we have. God's not just a one-way God. He works on both sides. That's right. If you're having a problem with your finances, not only is it working in your heart, but he's also working on a way to get that finances That's to right. you. If you have problems in your marriage, he can work on you as well as your husband. He works on both ends, trying to make it meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And he answered him, I am, I am, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, what have I, what have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab? To slay me. He said, no, if I go talk to Ahab, he's going to kill me. And as the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whether my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they find thee not. And now thou sayest, go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. He Obadiah is telling him, listen, Ahab has looked everywhere. He's turned over every rock. He wants to find all of you. And Elijah is saying, go tell him right here I am. I am. I'm right here. Don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. I want to skip down here just a little bit, okay? Oh, <laughs> okay, we're going to go down to 25. Because I want to get down here to where Elijah basically laughs in the face of the prophets. The prophets of Baal. Okay? And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under it. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal, from morning even into noon, saying, O oh, Baal, hear us! But there was no voice, nor was any, there any answer. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. Do you understand? He says, okay, we're going to put a sacrifice here. You're going to do what you can. You're going to call upon your God. And the God that delivers with fire, he's the God. Yes. Well, they're just jumping in. And they're doing everything they know to do to try to make fire come. And it's just not happening because there's no God. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. For he is a God, either he's talking, or he's pursuing, or he's on a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth, or he must be awakened. In other words, uh, your God done took a vacation. <laughs> your God's on vacation, apparently he can't hear you, there's no fire under here. If there, if your God was listening, he'd already consumed this, all, this, this sacrifice. But apparently your God's uh, on vacation, he's asleep. Maybe we need to wake him up. Maybe you need to cry a little louder, maybe you can wake him up. Because face it, Elijah knew there's only one God, and they weren't praying to him. That's right. There was only one God, and they was talking and listening. They, there was not no God. There was, there was just not there. <laughs> and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out. They even cut themselves, trying to say, oh, surely if we're at this, oh, he'll listen. And it came to pass... When midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of this evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice nor any <coughs> to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed, which is five gallons. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid them on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels of water, and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time, and they did it the second time. And he said, Do it a third time, and they did it a third time. Now get this, he's put like 20 barrels of water on top of this altar. The wood's soaking wet, the sacrifice is soaking wet, so I mean it's going to be impossible to burn, right? Amen. And the water ran about the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, 
Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day, let it be known this day, Hallelujah. that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned and that and thou hast turned their heart back again. When the fire of the Lord fell, it consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Not only did it get the sacrifice, it just simply burned everything right out of there. <clears throat> and when the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah, Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. I want you to understand, he literally caught fire down from heaven, consumed the bullock, consumed the stones, the wood, the water, and then, and then and only then, did they realize that the God that he spoke to, the Lord God of Israel, the one that we call Jesus, he is the one true God. Amen. And he slew all those men. Well, I want you to know, Jezebel was uh, not a very happy woman. Now look, he's, he's talked to the widow woman. He's seen for himself what God can do. He can feed you. He can give you water. Give you, took care of him at the brook. And then he laid himself upon the child. The, the, the breath came back into the child. And then he calls down fire from heaven and consumes what seems to be impossible. And then I want you to go over here to the first, first of chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the God do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. In other words, uh, Elijah, I am going to kill you the same way. I'm telling you, I'm coming after you. You, you think that your aunt Jezebel was on his tail. But instead of standing up, what does he do? And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. I want you to understand, in all that he had seen and done, something in his humanity made him afraid. Something in his humanity made him afraid. Now all these guys, he had thousands, he had thousands of uh, prophets cutting themselves, screaming and yelling. And one woman says, I'm going to get you. And he run. He run. Does that let you know that we, we are just as human? Do you understand that? We see God do miraculous things in our life. I bet if I had you, each and every one, raise your hand today. You can all tell me of some wonderful thing that God has accomplished in your life. Uh, Am I right? Yeah. Have you not all seen something sure wonderful, right. miraculous happen in yeah. your life? Yeah. And you know for an absolute fact that it was God who did it? Sure. Yeah. You know it was God. And seemingly somehow, something will come your way. You'll get sick or your finances will be bad or you'll get in a big argument with your husband. Or, or your job's falling apart and you'll go... Oh God, I thought you was going to take care of me. I thought you was going to take care of me. And you go and you get in your bed and you go, Oh, worry, 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 worry. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, you want to know what you're going to do? You're going to stand. And you're going to stand. And you're going to stand because I want you to understand God knows who we are. And He knows that we are just human. And He knows that we fall. And He knows that we make mistakes. Do you understand that? Instead, I don't want to read on. I, I just, I, this has just been, it just has encouraged me so much. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Oh. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under, ju under a juniper tree. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> under a juniper tree. 
and he requested for himself that he might die. Oh, just let me just die. Let me die. I'm just going to lay here and I'm just going to die. I tell you, I just can't take any more. I just can't. I just can't take no more. God, I just don't know why you don't hear me. Don't you ever listen to me? Surely you know it's that husband of mine. You know it's that husband of mine. It's that wife of mine. It's all her fault. It's that woman you gave me. If you hadn't given me that woman, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I prayed and prayed about this job, and I just knew you wanted me to have this job. Now look where I'm at now. If you didn't want me to have the job, why did you let me get it? Here I go to church all the time, and whoa, worry, worry, worry. I want you to know, worry is the opposite of faith. Do you know that? Worry is the opposite of faith. If the enemy can get your mind to thinking on the negative things in your life, if he can get your mind to be so consumed, well now, now if I just do this, now if I, if I try, if I just pay this one, and, 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 and all night long you're trying to figure out how you can make this work. How can I make this work? Let's see, if I do this and this and this, and pretty soon your mind is so consumed with what you can do amen. that you don't give an ear to what God can do. Oh, amen. Yeah, amen. If you just wait, stand still, and listen. Yes. Do you understand that? Sometimes you have to do nothing to do something. Sometimes you have to be quiet that you might hear. Amen. So much of the time we do this and think we're the best conversationalist in the world. I can talk for two hours, not stop. I feel sorry for the guy you're talking to. Because I want you to know and understand, a conversation is a two-way street. Do you know this? A conversation is a two-way street. If you're sitting and you're having a long conversation with someone and you're the only one talking, then you have no idea what that person feels. You have no idea what's going on in their life. <coughs> a conversation says you speak and listen. <coughs> and the best conversation you can have with God is you speak and then you listen. Then you listen. Oh, God is so good. He is so good to us. <coughs> but he... <coughs> Excuse me, I have to drink. <clears throat> but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is enough now O Lord take away my life for I am not better than my father's and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree behold that an angel touched him and said unto him arise and eat because, see, God knows that sometimes we just need rest. Sometimes we need to just... You know, I'm going to tell you what. I need a vacation every now and then. Just to get my mind right. Am I right, Pastor? Do you not need a vacation every now and then? Sometimes you need to just get away. I, and if you can't take a week's vacation or a day's vacation, take yourself an hour vacation. An hour vacation where you can get aside and just stop and meditate and think about God. You will be surprised how much an hour of quiet, which is not something I get very often, how an hour of quiet can renew your mind. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You need to steal away and listen. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Now look, the angel came and he fed him. And then he went back to sleep. <laughs> God said he's not rested enough. He's just not sure enough. We're going to give him time. Because the one thing I know about God is that he will give you time to work things out. Yes, you will. He is not like men and women. He's not like humanity that says, all right, this has happened. You've got two hours to get through it. We're all individuals, and we all go through things in different times. It may take me a day to get over a bad experience. It may take... Brother Ronnie, uh, uh, two days to get over a bad experience. It may take someone a year to get over a bad experience. We all, it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We all have things that come against us. We all have things that bring us down. We all have things 
that we're not sure how to work. And you may be able to work it out in a week, and it may take me my entire life to work it out. Do you understand that? We're all individual, and we all work at different speeds. And because somebody's not doing what you want as fast as you want it done, doesn't mean that they're wrong. That's right. It just means that they're having a little more difficulty getting it worked out. Amen. But the one thing I know about God is He has more patience than we can ever imagine. If He didn't, I wouldn't be standing here right now. Do you understand? He is so loving and compassionate and gracious. And He waits for you. And He waits for you. And He will send that angel to nudge you and to strengthen you. And that's why when you're going through troubles, someone will come and they'll, they'll speak something to you and they'll say, oh, I tell you, God is just in this. And, and you think, wow, I might be able to make it. I might be able to make it. I, I think I can get through this all right. And you come to church and someone preaches a wonderful message and all of a sudden you've got more strength and, and you're, you're stronger now than you were before. And yeah. I think I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. Because if you listen to God, He'll talk to you. Hallelujah. And the angel of the Lord came see. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. See, God knows when things are too hard for us. And we think, Well, if I'm a child of God, I can go through anything. Well, yes, you can. But there are certain steps that you're going to take to get through those things. Every one of us. We all have steps that we have to go through to get through things. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights into Horeb, the Mount of God. Do you understand? The second time, he didn't go back to sleep. The second time, he stood up on his feet and he said, I can do all things. Hallelujah. I can do all things. And I tell you, I can't tell you how many times I have stood and spoke these words. I can do all Hallelujah. things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. I can do all things yes. through Christ Jesus that strengthens yes, yes. me. And there have been things in my life that I did not know how to deal with. Yes. Did not agree with God. Thought God was totally wrong. If he only understood, he wouldn't have allowed this to happen. And do you know what? But God would give me these little morsels. He'd feed me. He'd send people to me. Encourage me. Strengthen me. And then there came a day when I said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. And I go on into the next trial. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I... Even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. How many of you have ever said, no one has ever had to go through what I went through? Yeah. Nobody knows what I'm going through. No one out there understands what's happening in my life. Right. I'm the only one who has ever experienced this horrible thing. <laughs> and God is saying, uh-uh. <laughs> Death. Everybody's touched by death. <coughs> sickness, we're all touched by sickness. Financial problems, we're all touched by financial problems. If it's not you personally, it's someone you love. That's right. And we have to stand in the understanding that, that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. But see, even still, Elijah just wasn't quite, quite right with God. Do you understand? He knew God was there, but he just didn't quite... I'm the only one out here, God. Everybody else is forsaken. Everybody else has left you. I'm the only one here. I'm sorry for yourself. Yes, he absolutely was feeling sorry for himself. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Sometimes you have to listen for the wee, small 
voice. Amen. Sometimes there are a lot of things that will distract you. You know, I'm sure when the when the earthquake came, he was distracted. I'm sure when the winds blew, he was distracted. I'm sure absolutely when the rock started falling off the mountain, he was distracted. But the thing that he hear, heard was the wee small voice. And he went out and he said, okay, God, I'm listening. I'm listening now. I'm listening. And he said, I have, after God says, what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, <coughs> thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Jephthah, of Abelmanath, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel, so Jehu slay. And him that escapeth the sword of Jehu, so Elisha. In other words, I've got you covered on every corner, son. You do what I tell you. You, do the, you anoint these men, and you will be covered on every hand. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Do you understand? God says, if I be for you, who can be against you? Do you understand this today? If you are a child of God, and you are following after God, and you're listening to his voice, and you're trusting in his word, and you put all your faith and trust in him, he will not let you down. He will put. He will cover you. He had that corner covered. He had that corner covered. Okay, you go. Jehu's got this. He's got this. Elisha's got that. Listen, I've got you covered, son. I've got you covered. And God will put you in a place where He's got you covered. He will get people to you to encourage you and to strengthen you. But you got to be able to listen. If you're not listening, God cannot help you. Hallelujah. When things get tough, don't feel surprised. Worry, worry, worry. Oh, my mama. Everything's gone so bad. Don't be surprised when you fall into diverse temptations, the Word of God That's tells right. us. Do not be surprised when things come against you. But rest assured and know today that God has already made a way of escape. Yeah. He's already worked it out if you'll listen. Yeah. Don't look at the falling rocks. Don't look at the wind blowing. Don't look at the earthquakes. Don't look at the bad things around. I'll tell you what, if you sit and watch TV for two hours, you will feel lost. Because they'll tell you the economy is in the pits. Everything's going downhill. There's no way we're going to make it. All miserable. But I want you to know and understand, if you serve a living God, and I serve the living God, the Lord of hosts, if you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, there is nothing impossible. I don't care what the economy looks like. Do you understand? I really don't care what the economy looks like. Because I know my trust is not in the economy. My trust is that God will supply my every need. Yes. Because there have been times in my life I didn't have a penny to my name. I didn't know whether to buy milk or bread. Well, what do I do? I want you to know and understand. God made a way. And He still makes a way for me. Yes. I don't worry about what economists say. I don't worry about what the, the, was the Center for Disease Control. I don't care what they say about famine and diseases and pestilence. I don't worry about, everybody was worried about bird flu, bird flu, yeah. bird flu. When we get bird flu, two-thirds of the whole world's going to die. Well, you know what? I'm not going to be in that two-third. I'm not going to be in that two-third. Because he says, what does he say? They can take up serpents. Not that we're taking up any snakes because they can just go their way. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. I believe those words. I really am. <coughs> Silly enough to believe <laughs> the Word of God is true. Yes. Yes. I am just 
filled with the Spirit enough to know that whatever God says is going to happen, it's going to happen. And I don't care what economists say. I don't care what Center for Disease Control. I don't care what anybody says. Nothing is going to happen unless it's ordained by God. And we don't always like that. We don't. And yeah, the economy may go right down the tubes. But you know what? The one thing I know, I'm that widow woman. I'm that widow woman. You understand? My cruise will not go empty. My barrel will not fail. I am that widow woman where God says that he will supply your every need. When he says, take no thought of tomorrow what you shall eat, drink, or wear, for your Father in heaven knows what you have need of, I believe it. I really, truly believe it. When he says, by my stripes ye are healed, even when I can't turn my head, even when I can't get out of the chair, even when my body hurts beyond, I say, I his stripes are healed. Yeah. My kids will say, Mom, I'll be, <laughs> true, true. I'll be sitting here, and I'll go to get up, and I'll go. Oh. No, go. You okay, Mom? I'm fine. <laughs> go, no, you're not. Yes, I am. You'll be fine. I mean, do I have pain? Yep. Do I accept it? No. Do I cry? Yep. <laughs> do I roll over tonight? Does my husband hear me go? Oh. oh. And you go. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> because His word is true. You have to believe. You have to believe. You know, I find it. He always puts another fish in the basket. I was thinking about when the, the barrel never went dry, you know, the oil. How that uh, Jesus, when he passed out, imagine how the disciples felt when they passed it out. And every and time they looked back in there, it was more. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's the way he does with us. Yeah. He'll take a little bit. And, just and make it go a you. really long way. Yeah. That's right. Well, I That's said, if every gas ever gets three dollars a gallon, I'll not be able to get up here. Are you here? Well, it's been four dollars for a long time. Yeah. We're still here. Still and you know what? In. I haven't seen it any different. No. Brother Pat talks about it. I'll go to the Walmart. Uh, it's full. You know, the baskets are full. Yeah. It's amazing. God will Jesus supply Jesus a way. He will. he will supply. <laughs> Jennifer, the news media thrives on uh, yeah. Doomsday. Doomsday. It's, it's like that uh, song, if, if, if everything could just be, nobody died today, yeah. nobody was sick today, no wars were today. I mean, but you don't get that. They tell you the bad things yeah, because bad things is what catches you. You know, for, for uh, four or five years, the, uh, the, the uh, unemployment was the lowest it's been in the history of the United States. Now it's at 6%. That's about what it was 10 years ago, and that was considered really good. It's all in but how it's you Thursday perceive things. Now. Oh, but it's oh, how you perceive things. Now. Honestly, absolutely how you perceive things. But see, they they, 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 they just keep throwing it out there and throwing it out there. But see, the one thing that I know is my faith is not in news media. No. My faith is not in our government. Run I want out. you to understand that today. I truly believe that before this election, you need to pray, pray, pray. pray. And you vote what God tells you to vote. I'm not telling you which way to go. But you need to be involved in this. You need to be involved and you do Absolutely. need to vote. You need to pray because it says, you know, to pray for those who have rule over you. Yeah. You do need to pray. And do, we do need to make the right choices and right yeah. decisions. Yeah. I'm not telling you which way to pray. But, you know, even at that, yeah. my faith is not in our government. Yeah, our that. faith is not in our army to protect me. Yeah. My faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ because Amen. I know that he will make a way. Amen. <clears throat> I know that I have somewhat to do. It is my responsibility as a Christian to pray and to vote the right way. I have to do that. It is my, my responsibility as a Christian to raise my children up to know who God is. We have a lot of responsibilities as a Christian. But first and foremost, above all things, you've got to trust God. Amen. And don't feel bad. When you, fell, when you fall down and you're sitting in your bedroom and you're whining and crying, why, why, why? Because even Elijah, a wonderful man of God, was depressed and cried uh -huh. and withheld his, and didn't know what to do and didn't know where to go. Many times. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? That just shows that you're human. Yeah. If you fall down on your face, don't give up. That's right. That's what this whole message is about. Hallelujah. If you fall down, don't give up. Because God can make a way if you just trust Him. Yeah, yeah, and if yeah. you just listen. And don't look at your circumstances. You know what? When Looking Peter jumped out of the boat, 
when he said, Biddest thou me to come? And he said, Come. Come on. When he jumped out of the boat, he was walking on the water. Yeah, he was. Do you understand that? He was walking on the water. It's not until he started looking at the waves and the wind and everything around him thinking, What have I done? I shouldn't be able to yeah. How stupid am I to jump out of a boat? And that's when he started sinking. Uh -huh. But when he turned his eyes toward God, when he reached out his hand and he took the hand of Jesus, he brought him right up out and they came back into the boat together. Yes, they did. That's the whole thing today. You're not in this alone. Yeah. We are not in this alone. Hallelujah. We serve a, a, a living, loving, compassionate, merciful God that knows where we are. Hallelujah. And He knows that we are all in different stages. What may take me a lifetime to overcome may take you a week. That's right. And what may take you a week may take someone else a year. So we don't stand in judgment of our brother where they're standing. Because I am not you and you are not me. And I leave you into the hands of God because you work out your own salvation. Yes. Even a man like Elijah. Even a man like Elijah that did great and mighty, mighty impossible things. Laid his body upon the young boy and he came back to life. Called fire down from heaven that consumed not just a sacrifice, but the wood, the stone, and all the water. Even the we dust. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Even he fell down. Even he doubted, where am I at? Amen. Am I the only one in this? Yeah. Don't give up because God will give you an answer. Amen. Amen.